John Murphy is very good at fully committing himself to the shots. Okay. Yes, all the top players are good at doing that. Frame six. That's why they're where they're at. That's why they are where they are in the rankings. He's sizing this red up on the left hand side of the table. Looks from here he can get on the black if it does go into the right corner. There's uh, no reason he doesn't take this red on. There was one similar to this in an earlier frame when he tried to uh, force the cue ball around the table. Cue ball's looking further off pushing, but this one shouldn't be difficult. Retain position on the black. The pot isn't easy though. Well, he knew he wasn't leaving anything else on part of the red he took on there. Maybe one in the center. Good effort from Ding, but unsuccessful on this occasion. It's funny though, Terry, I mean, we're all fantasists, aren't we, when we play this game? I mean, the reality is, if you probably try to shot 10 or 15 times, you might only get, well, 35% of them at best. If you knew that, would you still go for it, I wonder? Well, everybody's got their preferences of shots. I, th I thought those shots, uh, when I was playing, were quite easy. When I was like to power the shot on the back of the pack on the black, if he potted it, and you could say he was a little unlucky to leave it on. But he took a great shot from. Uh, he didn't want a shot you're going to play. I think uh, Ding took plenty of care, made his decision, fully committed to it, and he can't do more than that. You're not going to make all the balls anyway. It's when you don't uh, yourself fully and miss it, you're disappointed, Dominic. You're absolutely right, Terry. The other interesting point to make, though, and that you're in such a tight spot when you come back to the table that there's every likelihood you'll 15. make a mistake. Sixteen. We're using to come uh, over this side of the reds, off this black. Once again, the red uh, to the right of the black is causing a slight problem. First to six today, of course, in the two semi-finals. We've gone from best out of seven to best out of nine quarters, up to best out of 11. 24. Best out of 17 tomorrow for the final. A very special day in... Uh, Centre. Everybody trying to get a ticket. It's not full house. A long time the Newport Centre here as a venue for the Welsh Open, but back further than 31. that, it was used extensively by the Welsh Amateur Association to host the final of the Welsh Amateur. When I won the Welsh Amateur back in '91, it was played here. one of our other great Welsh amateur players in the day, Paul Dawkins, winning it twice in succession here before I did. It's a, it's a venue that's well known to me. Well, of course, the Welsh Professional Championship was played here in my time, which is going back to the black and white days. <coughs> that was only because we can afford a colour TV. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I used to love watching that. I remember Ray Ray winning it once. And he used to play in this sort of reddish orangey shirt and he played the most incredible snooker I've ever seen him. <laughs> created such an impression upon me. But it was great to see the likes of yourself and Doug and Cliff Wilson. 
Ray. Those are the There's been a good trend set here because Sean Murphy hit 126. Just super break the second frame, got in again first in the third game and missed on lost position. And this happened again. He was just starting to get some momentum in this first frame, the fifth frame after the interval. And a beautiful 90 from a long red. It wasn't again, and again, the little cannon went round in the pack. Here we see it. Really wanted to catch the pink then, about half ball. Split a few reds and guaranteed to be on the red by the black, but wasn't to be. Enough to work now to get another chance. Quite as planned there, but I'm not sure if he's left an easy pot on for Ding. Yes, whether or not Ding takes this red on will largely depend, I think, as to whether he feels he can avoid the red that's right of the black. He feels he can avoid the cannon on that red. He could play this as a shot to nothing. Trace of right hand side on the cue ball. that Ding would be anxious to avoid cannoning. Well, played that with a tremendous amount of check side on the keyboard. Made the pot a very low percentage one. Well, he caught the pot thin, so if you've uh, potted it, it would... Do at a different angle completely there to hit the red and black, I think. You misjudged that slightly. The only good thing is Sean Murphy can't get through to the red on the left of the pack there that's available to pot. Maybe he did see a plant there, I didn't notice it, but he could have mishit it, of course, but the pace he hit the cue ball, I've just felt he must have seen the plant. Well, not really one off another, I don't think he would have seen that, he just hit it badly. See, the cue ball only just went past the balk line, which wasn't a good shot. If didn't get through to this red, it's a chance. Yeah, I think he can, Terry. Now, I wonder if he'll play this with a lot of topspin and try and just stop the white dead for the... Be a bit of a trick shot. But he also has a... Well, it's always going to be difficult to slow that cue ball enough. Poor position on the black plate that way. I thought he might have played the topspin shot there with a bit of power just to... stop the cue ball absolutely dead. But as you can see in our picture, it would appear he's been extremely fortunate to get position on the pink. I think he can just get through. That's a good fortune that you need sometimes in a match. Yeah, certainly could uh, pay dividends, that bit of luck. Seven. You can't tell with Ding what he plays, he doesn't show anything out, does he? Like, uh, but a few times when he was younger, he showed a bit of emotion, but in general terms, he uh, keeps himself under control. A lot better these days. Hey. He's very young when he came over to play, first of all, and he was an exceptional player, and still is. It can't have been easy for him coming to a strange country, didn't speak the language, didn't like the food. That's because you never come down from Ashley and had faggots and peas. Fifteen. Easy out of Ashley. Sixteen. Yes, well, I think he has problems pronouncing it. I mean, we used to levy one criticism to Ding that he wasn't very good when behind in a match. But with the the enormity of experience that he has now on the circuit, 93. and the tournament he's won, he's 
Just as capable of winning a match from behind now as anybody. Because, let's be honest, when you're playing your fellow top 16 professionals, you're going to have 3-1 interval leads all the time. On many occasion, facing def deficits in a match, 31. you mustn't hang your head. You just must believe that if you get the chances, you can reel off two or three frames. 32. He's been professional now for nine years. It was very quickly, I must say, I remember him coming on the circuit early on in the qualifiers and always looked like a very special talent. He won the World Amateur and the uh, and 21 Amateur World Championship at a very young age, at 15 or 16, I think. 39. He's been the face of snooker in, Canada, in uh, China for a long 14. time now, and uh, he's a superstar over there. I think he's done a lot to help the, guy, the development of the game in China. I just sometimes wonder what's happened to all the big Thailand players that we used to have years ago. There were a number come through. 46. They don't seem to have too many these days. It's, it seems to be all about China. We do have a number of great players on the tour at the moment. Good shot on the Ding supporters there. There are many here in attendance. All supporting their flag bearer. 47. I watched him play in the, <coughs> in the UK Championship. I was confident in this game there. And he had the front row. Um, people from China supporting Ding, obviously. And he played this one shot. There's quite a big crowd there. And he's so they all clapped and nobody else in the crowd clapped. It was quite an easy shot. And it was a lovely picture, you know, and, the, and if you notice them, when they're supporting him, they, all, they also smile 54. when they clap, you know, and it, it is a beautiful picture, one, one I won't forget. That's a very good positional shot. 63. He started off this effort a little bit of good running. He potted a good uh, red, played for the black. 70. A little too far, and next thing he's gone down and. He can get through to the yeah. party that spread that I've, I've written and this is what we're seeing here now. Break goes on to 71. Chance now for the uh, second century of the match. 78. Sean Murphy, 126 in the second frame. 79. Murphy scored very well and he's going to find himself two frames behind again. 86. Well, it won't matter about the missed escape to the yellow. Excellent 86 from Ding. He gains his two frames of advantage. This match leads to a Murphy by four frames to two. Well played, Ding Junhui, and uh, almost Harry was saying there in commentary, it seems as if his history is repeating uh, itself. Something that happened in the first session uh, happening in the second as well, Darren. Murphy again started very well with a big break, and then it seemed almost when his confidence was up, he made another mistake and let Ding in. Yeah, every every has been the same, other than the first frame, you know. Ding won that on his own merit, but every other frame, Sean Murphy has got in first. He's either made a frame-winning break, or he's got a 30 and broke down. And in the frame.